In today's video, we are going over evidence-based exercises for cervical radiculopathy. <laughs> So Liang et al. in 2019 showed that exercises were helpful in patients that had cervical radiculopathy over doing nothing. So basically, if you have a patient that comes in with cervical radiculopathy, we want to know which exercise were shown to be affected based on our medical literature. And in today's video, we're going to go over the exact exercise they use from this paper. Far and away, the most common exercise you'll see are isotonics. And probably the most common exercise was a chin tuck. In order to perform this, you can do this either sitting or you can do it supine. So we'll have our patient here, Tiffany, sit up nice and tall and pretend like you have a nice stinky sock you're gonna bring in front of Tiffany's face and she's gonna tuck her chin straight back. And basically, you start with good posture, tuck your chin in, hold for a second and then relax and just perform repetitions, nice and simple. You can also perform chin tucks in supine. So basically have your patient lying on the table and from here, same idea, here comes the stinky sock and we're trying to tuck in against that, okay? So one of the cues you can use for patients is helpful is go ahead and pick your head up here. We're gonna take a towel, make sure it's not too big because that can screw up the movement as well. And then go ahead and back down again. The towel serves as a little bit of biofeedback. So basically you're trying to push back into the towel, just like so, yep, and then relaxing. Let's do about three repetitions, right? So you can see that the towel will give a little bit of feedback. The patient knows I wanna push back into this as opposed to just trying to drive their head back into the table. The next exercise is a chin tuck with a head lift. So basically perform your chin tuck as did before and pick up your head just one inch off the table and then right back down again. So one common mistake you'll see folks do is when they chin tuck and then lift up, they jut their chin up towards the ceiling. We don't want that. The other mistake you see is that go ahead and chin tuck and then lift and then bring your chin all the way to your chest. Some people go too far, okay? So basically we want a light chin tuck and lifting up just one inch and that's it, okay? The next exercise is going to be a chin tuck with a head lift and then rotate fully all the way to your right. Yep, and all the way to your, back to the right. Both sides, and then back down again. Chin tuck, lift up just one inch and then rotate as far as you can left and as far as you can right. Good job, relax. The next exercise is resisted cervical rotation. This actually did come from a study. So essentially we're gonna have Tiffany go ahead and bite onto a band. As you can see, can you turn to your left here so the camera can see? Looking good. And then from here, stretching the band out side to side, placing their hands on the walls, and then we're gonna rotate to the left and rotate to the right. As you can see, we're strengthening into rotation. Next exercise we're gonna go over are active range of motion exercises. And in this study, they would prescribe active range of motion into the direction that's limited. So when you do an evaluation, you notice your patient is limited, rotating to the right or extending, they would have the patient perform rotation to the right or extension, right? So let's have you do three repetitions towards your right. Go ahead and turn. Yep, nice tall posture. Excellent, very good. Now let's just do two chin the chest, cervical flexion. Good, you got it. Perfect. Let's do lateral bending. So try to get your ear towards your shoulder. Excellent, we'll do two of these. The last one we'll do is pure extension, straight back. Yep, and then two of those. So do keep in mind, when patients have cervical radiculopathy, usually certain positions don't feel great. Generally speaking, turning towards the side that's involved, side bending to that side and extending can feel terrible. However, in this study, they actually side bent towards the side that was more painful, provocative, and stiff. So it's not like you have to go nuts and jam people into end range of motion, but do keep in mind, it's okay to give them active range of motion into the positions that don't typically feel great. The next exercise we can prescribe is going to be neural mobility. And then the studies on cervical radiculopathy, generally speaking, they were stretching the median nerve. So what we're gonna go over is the upper limb neural tension test position one. So go ahead and reach out the side, extend and let side bend away, okay? This will be a stretch of the median nerve. We can do repetitions where we extend, yep, side bend, and then we can get the arm involved as well. If you wanna try to glide this nerve, we can just bring the head towards the involved side when we're extended, and then we go opposite direction, Bend at the wrist, bend at the elbow, yep, and then going back and forth. You got it, back and forth. This will be a glide. And now I've got a free guide for you today. It's an evidence-based cheat sheet to cervical radiculopathy. We go over all the fundamental basics for diagnosis and treatment of cervical radiculopathy. It's an eight-page PDF, and I'll take you from a novice to an expert extremely quickly. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and download that right now and get learning. The next exercise are cervical endurance exercises. Now we can prescribe these and dose these using incline bench. So generally speaking, the more upright you are, the easier it is. And the more we take the decline down, the harder it's going to be, okay? 
So the first exercise we'll try is we'll go chest down, yep, onto the bench, and from here, go ahead and chin tuck for me, and just hold this nice, good posture, okay? Again, if we wanna make this more challenging, all I have to do is take the incline and start bringing it down, okay? Next one we'll do is we'll flip, we'll go onto your back. This would be more for the anterior or front portion of the neck. It's the same exact idea. So from here, we chin tuck, head lift, try to get into a good posture, bring your head back towards me. Think about getting nice and tall, bring your head towards, yep, me, yep, you got it. And then again, we just hold this for time. If we wanna make this more challenging, we go down a little bit lower. And the last variation is we can just go onto your side. So from here, yep, a little tough to get on this incline bench, sorry, Tiffany, good. Yep, nice, good posture, head in alignment, and just holding in this position, okay? If I wanna make this more challenging, again, I just bring it a little bit lower. So these exercises weren't actually included in the study, but one really easy way to advance some of those movements you just saw is go down to a plank position. So we're gonna have Tiffany go ahead and plank, and from here, nice chin tuck, yep, and try to keep your head down a little bit, good posture. And one of the reasons why this is nice is we're still training the endurance of the, the um, backside of the neck, but we're also getting some scapular stability and some core stability too. Now we can also do this in a side plank for the side of the neck. So I have um, Tiffany go ahead and pop into a side plank right here. Yep, you got it. Good posture. Pretend like someone's pulling you from your head and your feet and stay out nice and long. And what you'll see is, yes, we're getting some work for the side of the neck. We're also getting some scapular stability on the bottom side arm and also some core stability in the center. Scapular strengthening can also be helpful for patients who have cervical radiculopathy. One very easy place to start is just a scapular squeeze. So we're gonna have Tiffany just sit up nice and tall here. And from here, bringing the shoulder blades back. Yep, trying to pinch those shoulder blades together. You should feel the muscles in the center of the back working when you're doing this. If you wanna to try to advance this exercise, it's pretty easy. We can use an incline bench here. You can start without weight or add a little bit of weight. Right here, we have 2.5 pounds. We're gonna go chest down. And then from here, we're just gonna perform some letters. The first of which is going to be an A, shoulder blades together. Yep, hands going up towards the sides. And same idea, pulling your shoulder blades together just like so. Second exercise is gonna be a T. So coming out wide to the side, just like so. Very good, squeezing those muscles on the way on top. You got it. And the last one, and probably the hardest, is gonna be the Y coming up at this angle. Yep, you got it, good. Bringing those shoulder blades together, yep, and then relaxing. Strength training can also be very effective for patients with cervical radiculopathy. Kujapur in 2009 was a personal hero of mine because he showed that strength training was helpful for patients that had cervical radiculopathy. And the exercise they chose were a chest press, dumbbell overhead press, that pull down, upright row, front raise, and a bent over rear delt fly, which looks like it's taken out of a muscle and fitness magazine, right? It's basically strength training for the upper body. And what they show that this was actually effective for cervical radiculopathy. So you have a patient that really likes strength training, you can probably continue them with their strength training, and two things, you're gonna allow them to continue doing what they love. The second piece, it'll probably help to rehabilitate them over the course of time. What I will say is you probably have to pull back a little bit on the movements that are really painful, reduce the loads, reduce the range of motion, something to make the movements more tolerable. And over the course of time, obviously you can start to ramp back up. I personally am a really big fan of using strength training in my patients that have cervical radiculopathy, but I wanna know your thoughts. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. It's also important to note that Detering in 2019 showed that if you compare specific neck exercises, so things like chin tucks, resisted rotation, so on and so forth, against just performing three by 30 minutes per week of either aerobic activity or some sort of muscular strengthening, strength training exercises, they both work positively and have the same exact effect. So you have a patient in front of you, could you use specific neck exercises, scapular exercises, nerve glides? Of course, they seem to be helpful, but if you just give them aerobic activities or strength training, especially if they already love to do those things, that's probably gonna have the same effect, at least based on this study. So at the end of the day, you can choose whatever intervention you think is best for the patient that's in front of you. So what about sets and reps of these exercises? Well, you'd have to go back into each individual study and see the exact amount of sets and reps of use of each individual, individual exercise, which would be in a pain in the butt. But what I will say overall is that largely, in most of these studies, the participants were performing exercises two to three days per week with a physical therapist. And generally speaking, they did the harder, more challenging exercises while they were in the clinic. The other piece is that most of these um, participants were performing a home exercise program on their off days. So generally they're doing something every single day of the week, right? In terms of how many exercises, generally it was somewhere between three to five exercises when they're in the clinic, and then somewhere around three to five exercises on the home exercise program. Somewhere between one and three sets, somewhere between, let's say five and 15 repetitions. 
So now that you have some evidence-based exercise for cervical radiculopathy, you may not know the basics about cervical radiculopathy. So what is, how do you diagnose accurately? What is the anatomy? What are the mechanisms of injury? Prognosis, what are the best treatments? Things like injections and surgeries. I have a complete guide for you. Put it right there in the corner. Why don't you go ahead and click on that and I'll see you in the next video.